Shamshid Begum, Samsad Begum, the 14th of April 1919 to the 23rd of April 2013, was an Indian singer who was one of the first playback singers in the Hindi film industry. She had a distinctive voice and was a versatile artist, singing over 6,000 songs in Hindi and Bengali, Marathi, Gujarati, Tamil, and Punjabi languages, and of them, 1287 songs were Hindi film songs. She worked with maestros including Naushad Ali, S. D. Berman, C. Ramchandra and O. P. Nayar. Her songs from the 1940s to the early 1970s remain popular and continue to be remixed. <laughs> Personal life Shamshid Begum was born in Lahore of modern-day Pakistan on 14 April 1919, the day after the Jallianwala Bagh massacre took place in nearby Amritsar city. She was one of eight children, five sons and three daughters, born to a conservative Muslim family of limited means. Her father, Mian Hussain Bashman, worked as a mechanic, and her mother, Ghulam Fatima, was a pious lady of conservative disposition, a devoted wife and mother who raised her children with traditional family values. In 1932, the teenage Shamshid came in contact with Ganpat Lal Bato, a Hindu law student who lived in the same neighborhood and who was several years older than her. In those days, marriages were performed while the bride and groom were very young, and Shamshid's parents were already looking out for a suitable alliance for her. Their efforts were on the verge of bearing fruit in 1934 when Ganpat Lal Bato and Shamshid made the decision to marry each other. In 1934, despite strenuous opposition from both their families due to religious differences, 15-year-old Shamshid got married to Ganpat Lal Bato. The couple were blessed with only a single child, a daughter named Usha, who in due course married a Hindu gentleman, Lt. Col. Yogesh Ratra, an officer in the Indian Army. In 1955, Ganpal Lal Bato died suddenly in a road accident. His death left Shamshid very distraught, because her husband had been the focus of her life and they had both been extremely devoted to each other. He had handled many aspects of her career and contracts and had been a major positive energy behind her career progression. After his death, Shamshid became listless and lost the fighting spirit to pursue her career, which registered a sharp decline thereafter. Indeed, while Shamshid Begum was both an outstanding singer and a successful famous one, she was at some deeper level always a wife and mother first, someone who instinctively prioritized her family over her career. By nature, she preferred to keep away from the public glare and from business dealings, taking the view that it was rather unseemly for a lady to be involved in such things. After her husband's death, Shamshid Begum began living with her daughter and son-in-law in Mumbai, first in South Mumbai and later at Hiranandani Gardens in the Pawai neighborhood. She gradually became a recluse and devoted herself entirely to her grandchildren, to the point that the general public was unaware of whether she was alive or dead. In 2004, a controversy erupted in the media, when several publications wrongly reported that Shamshid Begum had died a few years previously. Shamshid's family clarified in a press release that this was not so, and it later emerged that the Shamshid Begum who had died in 1998 was Sarah Banu's maternal grandmother. Her self-imposed seclusion is remarkable, because during all those decades away from the public eye, her old songs remained popular with the public and not a day passed without at least a couple of songs being played on Vivi Bharati and All India Radio. Career 1924–40 Begum's talent was first spotted by her principal when she was in primary school in 1924. Impressed by the quality of her voice, she was made head singer of classroom prayer. At 10, she started singing folk-based songs at religious functions and family marriages. She received no formal musical training. Her singing ambitions, which she held from 1929, met with opposition from her family. In 1931, when she was 12, 16, her uncle, who enjoyed kawalis and ghazals, secretly took her to Genophone or Xenophone music company for an audition with Lahore-based musician and composer, Ghulam Haider. Begum said in an interview, I sang Bahadur Shah Zafar's The Poet Ruler Ghazal Mera Yar Mujay Mile Agar. An impressed hater gave her a contract for 12 songs, with the same facilities provided to top singers. 
It was Begum's paternal uncle Amir Khan who convinced her father, Mia Hussain Bash, to allow her to sing. When she won a contract with a recording company, her father agreed to let her sing on the condition that she would record in a burqa and not allow herself to be photographed. She earned 15 rupees per song and was awarded 500 on the completion of the contract on Xenophone. Xenophone was a renowned music recording company, patronized by the rich, and her popularity grew in elite circles in the early 1930s. Though she had won the Xenophone audition without having any formal music training, Hussain Bakshwale Sahab and later Ghulam Haider improved her singing skills between 1937 and 1939. Her popular breakthrough came when she began singing on All India Radio air in Peshawar and Lahore from 1937. Producer Dilsik Punchali wanted her to act as well in a film he was producing. Begum readily agreed, gave a screen test and was selected. Her father became angry when he found out and warned her that she would not be allowed to sing if she continued to harbor a desire to act. Begum promised her father that she would never appear before the camera. She continued to sing songs on the radio. She never posed for photographs, and few people saw her picture between 1933 and the 1970s. Begum sang for air through her musical group, the Crown Imperial Theatrical Company of Performing Arts, set up in Delhi. The then Air Lahore helped her to enter the world of movies as they frequently broadcast her songs, which induced music directors to use her voice for their films. Begum also recorded knots and other devotional music for a couple of gramophone recording companies. Her crystal clear voice caught the attention of Sarangi maestro Hussain Bakshwale Saheb, who took her as his disciple. Topic: 1941 to 45. Director Mehboob Khan brought Shamshid Begum to Mumbai after telling her husband I will take her to Mumbai and give her a flat, car, conveyance and even if four to six people accompany her, it's fine. Please let her come to Mumbai. Her father was not convinced at first but later gave in as Shamshid wanted to come to Mumbai. Hader used her voice skillfully in some of his earlier films such as Kazanchi and Condon by 1940, Begum was already well established on the radio. The songs, Chichi Wich Pa K Chala, Mera Hal Vekhk, and Kankan Dayan Faslan from Yamla Jat of 1940 became a huge hit and popularized Pran, singer Begum, and composer Hader. Hader continued to compose hit songs which Begum sang for films including Zamindar, Punji, and Shama. Khan used Begum's voice in Takdir 1943, where he introduced Nargis as the heroine. Begum was soon singing for other composers including Rafiq Ghaznavi, Amir Ali, P. T. Gobindram, P. T. Amarnath, Bulo C. Rani, Rashid Atra and M. A. Mukhtar, in the pre-independence era. When Haider moved to Bombay in 1944, Begum went with him as a member of his team, leaving behind her family and staying with her cha-cha paternal uncle. After partition, Haider migrated to Pakistan but Begum remained in Mumbai. She had no known Pakistani connection post-1947. Begum became a national star between the early 1940s and the early 1960s, having a voice different from her peers such as Norjian also discovered by Haider, Mubarak Begum, Saraya, Suda Malhotra, Gita Dutt and Amirbai Karnataki. Her peak period in the Hindi film industry was from 1940 to 1955 and again from 1957 to 1968. 1946 to 55 Begum sang extensively for composers including Naushad Ali, O. P. Nayar, Siram Chandra and S. D. Berman from 1946 to 1960. Naushad acknowledged in an interview that he was indebted to Begum in reaching the top, as she was famous before he became known in the late 1940s. After his tracks sung by her became highly popular, his talent was recognized. It was Begum's solo and duet songs sung for Naushad in the late 1940s and early 1950s which made Naushad famous. After Naushad became successful he recorded songs with new singers as well in the early 1950s, but kept working with Shamshid in the late 1950s and early 1960s. Naushad chose his favorite singer Begum once again to sing four out of the twelve songs in Mother India. Begum is credited with singing one of the first westernized songs, Mary Yan, Sunday K Sunday by Ramchandra. She kept getting more offers to sing songs and was the highest paid female singer from 1940 to 1955 and again post Mother India in 1957 to 1964. 
In 1949, music directors S. Rajeshwara Rao, M. D. Parthasarathy and Balakrishna Kala asked her to sing Jayo Jayo Shippayan Bazaar for P. Banamati in the film Nishan, produced by Gemini Films of Madras, which became highly popular. Although Burman started composing Bengali music in 1937, he achieved national fame with tracks sung by Begum in Hindi films. Burman was not well established as a music director in Hindi films until 1946. He then asked Begum to sing in his debut Hindi film as music director, Shikari, 1946, with the song, Kuch Rang Badal Rahi. In 1949, came Shabnam, in which Burman asked her to sing duets named Pyar Main Tumna and Kismet B. Bichadna with Mukesh, which became popular. Shabnam was Burman's biggest hit to that date with Filmistan, and was especially noticeable for its multilingual song Ye Dunia Roop Ki Chor, sung by Begum and acted by Kamini Kaushal, which became another hit. Burman subsequently asked her to sing tracks in Bazaar 1950, Mashal 1950, Bihar 1951, Shahensha 1953, Miss India 1957, and other films. The song Jam Thamla from Shahensha was a trendsetter for Burman compositions. Begum had met Nayar during her radio stint in Lahore, when he worked as an office boy delivering cakes for the lead singers. In 1954, when Nayar got a break as a composer, he approached Begum to record songs for Mangu. Nayar described her voice as resembling a temple bell for its clarity of tone. He worked with her until the late 1960s and gave her many hit songs, including A Flat to G Hon Laga from Mr. and Mrs. 55, Main Yan Gayi Tuja from Howra Bridge, Zara Pyar Karli from Mangu 1954, Sayan Teri Ankan Mine from 12 o'clock 1957, Todasa Dil Lagana from Musafirkana, and many others. Several of her songs from this period remain extremely popular, including those acted by Nigar Sultana, such as Terry Mephil Mine, from Mughal e Azam and Mir Pian Gay, from Patanga, 1949, as well as Sayan Dil Mine Anari, acted by Vijantimala, and Buj Mera Nam Hai, acted by Mano Mumtaz, Milt Hai Anken Dil Wa, from Babul, 1950, had a romantic duet with Talat Mahmud, acted by Dilip Kumar and Munawar Sultana, which also became popular. Her duet with Rafi. Chala Deja Nishani, from Bazaar 1949, became a mega hit. In the late 1940s, Maiden Mohan and Kishore Kumar sang as chorus boys for her songs at the Filmistan studio. Begum promised at this time that she would sing songs composed by Mohan once he started his career as a music director and would accept a lower fee. She also predicted that Kumar would become a great playback singer. She later recorded duets with Kumar, including Gori K. Nainan Mine Nindia Bari, from Angari, 1954, and Mir Nindan Me Tum, from Naya Andaz. 1955-76 Shamshid was at the peak of her career right from 1940 to 1955 and was the most in-demand female singer and highest paid female playback singer from 1940 to 1955 but after her husband's accidental death in 1955, Begum became a recluse and stopped accepting singing assignments, including recordings, for a year. Though she had stopped recording for her songs in the year 1955 after her husband's death, the songs released between 1955 and early 1957 including songs from films such as Sid, Naya Andaz, Baradari, Mr. and Mrs. 55 and other hits continued to be popular. At this juncture Mehboob Khan approached her in 1957 and said he wanted a full-throated voice for Nargis in Mother India. The first song she sang after returning to her career was P.K. Gar Aj Pyari Dulhania Chali for Mother India. She made a successful comeback, and subsequently recorded many notable songs for films such as Howrah Bridge, Jolly Note, Love in Simla, Biwakuf, Mughal e Azam, Bluff Master, Garana, and Rustam e Hind. The well known later playback singer, Lata Mangeshkar, started to sing when Begum was at the peak of her career, and Begum's break after her husband's death boosted Mangeshkar's career, helping her to be offered high quality songs. In the early careers of Mangeshkar, as well as her younger sister, Asha Bosli, between 1944 and 1956, they had often been asked by producers and music directors to imitate Begum's style of singing, because producers could not afford Begum's fees. In their first song together, Mangeshkar was a part of the chorus while Begum was the main singer. 
Many of the songs sung by Lata like Ayega Ayega were sung in Shamshid Begum's style. Even Asha Bosli's songs like her first duet with Kishore Aati Hai Yad Humko from the 1948 film Mukhtadar bear direct resemblance to Shamshid Begum's style. From 1949 to 1960, beginning with the song Dar Na Mahabit Karli from Andaz 1949, Mangeshkar and Begum have sung many duets together, with the most famous being Pyar K. Jahan Ki from the 1949 film Patanga, Bakpan K. Din from 1951's Didar. Their last song together was Mughal e Azam's song Teri Me Fil Mine Kismat in 1960. Begum sang songs together with Mangeshkar and Bosli, including Mubarak Ho Wo Dil Jisko from Benazir 1964. It was the period between 1958 and 1963, that career of Lata got major boost as music directors started gradually preferring her soft voice, until then Gita Dutt and Begum were the most preferred singers but Shamshid Begum continued to be at the top from 1940 till 1963 non-stop. From 1965, her songs started to be mimed by actresses other than the heroine. Beginning in 1965, songs for her in films started getting reduced but the songs she sang instantly became hits through 1968. She then declared a self-imposed retirement in 1965. But she kept having certain composers asking her to sing songs in few films and among them her songs from films like in Daku Mongol Singh, Upkar, Kismet 1969, Here Ranja 1970, Johar Mahmood in Hong Kong 1971, Terry Mary Ik Jindri 1975, and Main Papi Tum Bakshanhar 1976. Her song Kajra from the 1968 film Kismet and Nathania Hale to Bada Maza from the 1971 film Johar Mahmood in Hong Kong remains popular. Retirement and death From the late 1980s, Begum started giving occasional interviews. In one of her interviews to Filmfare magazine in 2012 Begum disclosed, The more hits I gave, the less work I got. When I helped new composers I never told them to give me all their songs to sing. I believed only God could give, not them. Her final interview was in 2012. In 2009, she was conferred with the prestigious O.P. Nayar Award for her contribution to Hindi film music. She was also conferred the Padma Bhushan in 2009. Later her daughter Usha said in an interview, quote, quote, Because of the politics in the industry, she didn't want to work anymore. This is one of the reasons why she didn't let me be a singer. I told her, let me sing for my self-satisfaction, but she said if you will learn to sing, you will directly enter the industry. So, she didn't let me do so. Begum died at her Mumbai residence on the night of 23 April 2013 after a prolonged illness. She was 94. She was cremated in a small, dignified ceremony, Information and Broadcasting Minister Manish Tiwari said. The film industry has lost one of its most versatile singers. Shamshadji's style of singing set new benchmarks. Her melodious voice with powerful lyrics gave us songs that have remained popular even today. Prime Minister Manmohan Singh said. She was an artist of extraordinary talent and abilities, and the songs she has left behind in her long career, which she started with Air in 1937, will continue to enthrall music lovers. Quote, her daughter Usha Ratra said. She kept herself away from glamour of the industry despite being one of the top singers of her era as she did not like limelight. My mother used to say that artists never die. She wanted to be remembered for her songs. Topic. Selected songs Leek Pella Pella Pyar. Kahan Pe Nigahen Kahan Pe Nishana. Buj Mera Kya Nam Ri. Sid, 1956, Music, O.P. Nayar. Milt Hai Onken Dil Wa. Duet with Talat Mahmood, Babul 1950, Music, Naushid Ali. Chali Chali Kaizi Ye Hawa Ye. Duet with Usha Mangeshkar, Bluffmaster, 1965, Music, Kalyanji Ananji. Kabi Aar Kabi Par Laga Tir E Nazar. Aar Par 1954, Music, O.P. Nayar. O Gadawale Deer. Mother India 1957, Music, Naushad. Ye Dunia Roop Ki Chor. 
Shabnam 1949, Music, S. D. Berman. Mir Pia Gay Rangoon. Patanga 1949, Music C. Ramchandra. Ek Tara Sahara. Shama 1946, Music, Master Ghulam Haider. Holy Ayi Re Kanhai. Mother India. 1957, Music, Naushad. Naina Bar I Nir. Humayun 1945, Music, Master Ghulam Haider. Nazar Faro Na Hum Zay. Duet with G. M. Durrani 1951, Music, Naushad. Chad Babul Ka Gar. Babul 1950, Music, Naushad. Badi Mushkal Se Dil Ki Bikarari Ko Karar Aaya Nagma 1953, Music, Naushad, Lyric, Shokat Diwali. Kajra Mohabatwala Ankian Mine Isa Dala. Duet with Asha Bosli Kismet 1968, Music, O. P. Nayar. Mary Neendon Main Tum. Duet with Kishore Kumar Naya Andaz 1956, Music, O. P. Nayar. Terry Mephil Mine Kismat. Duet with Lata Mangeshkar Mughal-e-Azam 1960, Music, Naushad. Sayan Dil Mine Anari. Bihar 1951, Music, S. D. Berman. Reshmi Salwar Kurda Jolly Da. Nayadore 1957, Music, O. P. Nayar. Kisike Dil Mine Renada. Babul 1950 with Lada, Music, Naushad. Dardi Ko Akash Pukari. Mela 1948 with Mukesh, Music, Naushad. Ek Du Teen Aja Mazam Hai Rangan. Awara 1951, Music, Shankar J. Kishan. Dil Ichik Bichik Gur. Bare 9. 1950 Music, Roshan. Kahan Pe Nigahine. CID. 1956 Music, O.P. Nayar. Dor Koi Gay. Baiju Bara. 1952 Music, Naushad. Chaman Mine Reheke Virana. Didar. 1951 Music, Naushad.